Here we go, Claire. 100k to go. <laughs> I'm charging people to take the dogs to Brighton. They want to take them with you. So. Uh, looks like the uh, dogs have joined us, Claire. <laughs> Look at them go. So the start is at uh, Deer Park in Richmond. Beautiful setting. Flat as a pancake. Long may that last, Claire. <laughs> Sussex Downs, just around the corner. <laughs> This brings back memories. Walking along the Thames, just going past Teddington Lock. And we did this on Constanza two years ago. So it's a really lovely day, not too warm. Just got to 5K and uh, really enjoying it so far, Claire. Perfect, beer garden weather really, isn't <laughs> beer it? Beer garden weather, yeah. <laughs> like father, like daughter. <laughs> first rest stop 12k nice uh, glass of water and a snack wonderful good well, that's us fed and watered Claire didn't fancy her pastry much so I ate it as well <laughs> that's two pastries to me none to Claire I'll bring it back at the next rest stop so the next next rest stop is another 13k to go so let's do it. <laughs> it's more like it, Claire. Definitely. <laughs> nice woodland walk away from the traffic. And I uh, fully recommend to anybody who's doing a long walk to wear two pairs of socks at the same time because uh, instead of your foot rubbing against the shoe, your foot's rubbing against another sock. Apparently that's how it works. So. And zinc tape. And zinc tape, plenty of zinc tape. No, we're not catching the train. Just have to go over the railway bridge. So we're doing well, eh, Claire? Yeah, smashing it. 17k done. So how many of these events have you done, Claire? Um, five years ago, I did the first one, which was 100k non-stop from Eastbourne across the South Downs to Arundel and you joined me halfway. Yeah, is that and five years ago? Yeah. Blimey. And then uh, three years ago I did the Brighton Half Marathon. Yeah. And then this one. And uh, we're doing it in support of Farley Hospice. What's, what's the significance, Claire, with Farley Hospice? Um, so Farley Hospice looked after my mum and your first wife <laughs> um, when she had terminal brain cancer and um, I didn't realise before mum went into the hospice that hospices weren't just a place where you go to die, they actually offer a lot of care and pain relief care and uh, help the carers and then also uh, help the families post death as well with the support. So um, all the events I've done is to say thank you because they were 
absolutely amazing. They let us pretty much live there for two weeks, didn't they? Like yeah, at least two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and their staff were just incredible. Like they were just weren't just there for my mum, they were there for everybody else as yeah. well. And then afterwards, um the support they gave my niece when she had to go back to school was just incredible. Like you didn't I didn't think that was a thing that they'd offer. So um yeah, I just decided that I wanted to give back, especially during lockdown, because I thought, God, it was hard enough when we went through it. And then what these nurses have had to do and not be able to be near their families, but support other families, I just think is incredible. So just our little way of saying thank you and trying to pay back some of the tea money we spent when we were there. Your mum could talk as well, couldn't she? <laughs> That's why I'm a teacher, I'm paid to chat all day. What kind of woman was your mum? Uh, the strongest person I have ever met and ever will meet. She um, was always full hair, full makeup all the time. Uh, would make bake so many cakes, make you eat them all. Um, but if you wanted a refund, my mum was the person to go do that for you. Like she was so strong-willed. And um, when they told her that she only had, there was nothing they could do. She only had two weeks left. She was like, right, okay, and just... Dealt with it, didn't she? Yeah, just no worries me or anything. And some of the conversations I had with her, like, in her last days, like, even asking what dress should she wear for the funeral, just, I just don't know how she was strong enough to have those conversations. So one of the reasons why I'm not just doing a little race for life, not that there's anything wrong with doing those, but I wanted to do something that was really, really challenging and really, really hard because if I'm asking people to sponsor me and people, because money's tight for everybody nowadays, I wanted it to be something that was really, really hard and would take a lot of strength to do. So kind of showing the bit of my mum that's in me, if that makes sense. Yep. So, better crack on then, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> I love you. Lots of you uh, know I'm doing this walk and have been asking how you can send a donation. And for those that you would like to send a couple of quid, I'll put a link in the description below. And also, it's coming on across the bottom of the screen now. So, uh, thank you very much. Well, here we go. Quarter done, Claire. Yay! <laughs> Three more quarters to go. Quarter of the way done. Feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, we're just over a third of the way through. Feeling good, Claire? Really good. And uh, the views have opened up. We've had a steady climb for the last hour or so, and it's absolutely stunning. You can have a drink, Claire. Hey, still got it. <laughs> It's 5.30 in the morning. How are you feeling, Claire? Achy. <laughs> Very achy. We're a bit knackered. We've uh, walked through the night, a couple of stops, food, and uh, we've got, what we got left, Claire? Uh, well, that's 67 there, so. So we've got 33, 33 kilometers. k's to do, about 18, 19 miles left to do. So um, every time we stop, it's so hard to get back up oh, again, isn't it? harder. <laughs> but we're still smiling. And uh, well, I guess we've got something like four hours, five hours left at least walking. The pace we're going at the moment, it's really dropped off. But this is nice posh school.
Paddingley School, I think it's called. Right, it's pretty chilly, so we'll get cracking. That's the three quarter mark, and we've absolutely grinded to a pathetic pace about three kilometers an hour. It's been really hard going. There's so many stiles to climb over, so many deep, muddy paths to negotiate. Our feet are now killing us, but uh, we're happy we've got three quarters done. Yesterday morning and afternoon we were skipping along the banks of the River Thames saying how quickly we're going to do this and then the hills came and the darkness came and it's just uh, Relentless. taken away our, what's the word? Enthusiasm. Yeah, enthusiasm. Joy. Joy. <laughs> Still, we're plodding on and we're going to do this. Come on Claire. <laughs> We've just climbed up over the South Downs. Boy, that was a climb. <laughs> Too breathless to do any filming or talking. So now we're going down and uh, this chalk, this chalk path is very unforgiving on your feet. Boy, does it hurt. Well, it's official, just 5k to go, and we've been treated to a lovely hill to climb. That is the finish line, I promise you, at the end of your 100 kilometer. 